Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about counseling experience and advocacy experience. Experiences that you really want to have to stand out as a qualified applicant before you apply to genetic counseling grad school. I'm going to share what type of roles or volunteer positions would fit into each of those. I'm going to talk about when you should start applying to and gaining these experiences, how most programs define advocacy and counseling, and where you can learn more. If you're kind of new to learning about the process of applying to genetic counseling grad school, check out some of my other videos on the process and what's required to apply to get yourself a little bit of a starting point. But what's important to know is that each genetic counseling program kind of has its own feel and it's going to have its own list of recommendations or requirements for applicants. Some programs require applicants to have counseling experience. Others recommend it. Some programs think of advocacy and counseling as going hand in hand as a kind of being almost the same type of thing. On some programs websites, you might see that they list advocacy and counseling separately. So it is very important, probably the most important thing is to take a look at all of the schools that you're going to apply to and understand how they define counseling and advocacy and whether they require any of these experiences, just recommend them, strongly recommend them, or they don't put so much focus on them. That is going to give you a really good starting point and give you a good idea of what programs might be the best fit for you based on the experience you have. Or if you have lots of time before you're going to be applying, this research is going to serve you really well because it's going to tell you where to focus your efforts in the coming years. Once you have a better understanding of what the programs you're planning to apply to want from you, let's talk a little bit more about advocacy and counseling. What does that really mean? After looking at all 53 genetic counseling program websites to create uh, my bird's eye view guide to the genetic counseling application process, I have a really good idea of what programs consider to be advocacy. And I decided to write my own definition for advocacy experiences that programs are generally looking for. So in the scope of genetic counseling application preparation, I think of advocacy as working or volunteering for, with, or on behalf of individuals or groups who have different experiences or backgrounds than you, or supporting either a cause or a marginalized group. So that is very general. And there are thousands and thousands of volunteer roles and paid roles that can fit into the definition of advocacy. If you're not sure where to get started with advocacy, be sure to like and subscribe because next week you'll be able to catch my video on how to find the perfect match for an advocacy role that you'll enjoy, be passionate about, and then be able to share your experiences and in interviews and in your personal statement to make yourself stand out as a candidate. All right, so let's transition into thinking about counseling experience. In my last position that I count as advocacy as a crisis counselor, that definitely fits under the category of counseling as well. Not all advocacy experiences not all advocacy experiences involve counseling, like tutoring Spanish that did not involve any counseling whatsoever, but it was advocacy, but some do. I think of counseling as the provision of assistance or guidance in resolving a personal, social, or psychological problem or difficulty. And ideal counseling opportunities, I would say, are ones that involve training. So you complete required training and they involve some level of supervision. And that was definitely the case for my crisis counseling role. There are many different types of counseling organizations that you can find and volunteer with online or apply to for a paid position. One of the really commonly used ones is Crisis Text Line. Other popular counseling opportunities might be volunteering with a rape crisis center or a Planned Parenthood and doing some sort of pregnancy counseling, working with a organization that, that might be housed at your university, like a peer-to-peer -peer counseling or support type of group could be another opportunity. But there are lots of opportunities out there. And if you can explore and find something a little bit more unique than Crisis Text Line, that's great. If not, lots of people get into programs with Crisis Text Line being their main counseling experience. One of the other really important things to know is that it can take months for these organizations, especially the really big ones, to get back to you. They might have monthly or maybe even quarterly training that is required for all incoming volunteers. So you might write to them in January and you might not be able, if they are accepting new volunteers, you might not be able to start volunteering with them until 
March, April, or May, it can take a long time for them to get back to you. So be sure to start finding, identifying these opportunities and applying to them really early in the process so you can get at least a few months of experience in before you list it on your CV. And also so you have experience to draw from when you're talking in your interviews and writing your personal statement. I really hope this video helped demystify the advocacy experiences and counseling experiences that most genetic counseling programs are hoping to see on your CV. Please let me know down below what questions you have about genetic counseling or applying to genetic counseling grad school. Please like and subscribe. Take care, guys. Bye.